Wayne Stevenson here. It's too hot to fly. It's actually about 40 degrees below zero with the wind chill. So it's damn cold. Okay, so while 40 below isn't fun to be out in and it's not fun to fly in, we can use simulator all we want. All right, today I'm going to show you guys three ways that you can connect your wireless receiver to your computer so that you can fly your simulators using your transmitter without having a USB cable stuck into it. Easiest way to do it is just do it through Betaflight HID. You've already set your receiver up, everything's working, you just plug it away, Windows detects it, away you go. So essentially, any Betaflight flight controller that's running an STM32 F4 or an F7 is capable of doing a USB HID mode. Even a standalone flight controller connected to your receiver is going to work as well. So let's go ahead and load up Betaflight Configurator and connect our flight controller. Okay. Now that we've connected, you can see that uh, you've got a serial device on COM4. Your human interface devices, we see no game device. We're going to connect to our flight controller and beta flight configurator and go over to the CLI menu. And this is where we set it into our uh, USB HID device mode. So we're going to set USB HID underscore CDC equals on. Now it's set to on. We are going to save this. That's going to reset the flight controller. Let's go back to our device manager here. And you can see our serial device has changed to COM3, and we now see hit compliant game controller. So if we go into any games now, and if we go into our controller setup, you can see everything is working as it should. So if you're not going to use the Betaflight HID device, you're going to need to use a USB serial adapter or an Arduino board to pass those serial signals through. There's a couple more steps involved and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. For those of you wondering what we're gonna be doing, we are gonna take our Arduino Nano or our standalone FTDI USB serial adapter and we're gonna take our signal wire from our receiver and pass that through the USB port into our computer. And from there, we're gonna turn those signals into a gamepad signal, essentially. Okay, pull this off. You're going to need some female to female DuPont jumper cables. You might also want some 2.54 mil pitch three pin DuPont connectors. The DuPont jumper cables come in many different styles and lengths. Make sure you're getting them designed for a 2.54 mil pitch. And you don't want any male-female connectors. You don't want any male-male connectors. What you do want is the female-female. But you would do well to get an assortment because these do come in very handy, especially if you're using any sort of breadboards for electronics. Likewise, the DuPont connectors come in many styles. You want the female version in a 2.54 millimeter pitch. They typically come in packs of 50 or to 100. And like the DuPont connectors, I recommend getting an assortment. You never know when you're going to need a bunch. The reason I recommend getting the three pin connectors is because you're connecting using three pins. So to avoid accidentally shorting out the wrong pin, I like to keep them together with either electrical tape or pulling those out and replacing them here. And I'll show you how to do that right now.
I find the tip of an X-Acto knife works best for removing the plastic DuPont connector. Grab yourself a strand of three wires. I always try to keep a red one in the middle so I know which one's my voltage line. But as you run through them, you're gonna run out of colors. So use what you can, just pay attention to which one your voltage is running down. You're gonna to wanna to push your pin as far into it as possible. And you're gonna take the tip of your X-Acto knife, just open up that little plastic tab with your other fingers, push forward, and then just slides right off. Okay, so I like to grab the wire and clip that with my fingers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull back so that metal wire connector pushes deep inside. And that will free up the tab. I'm just gonna pull up on the tab. See? And then it just slides right out. And from there, all you have to do is feed the pins in. So, like I said, we want the red to be our voltage. And on the receivers, your voltage is always in the middle pin. So that is where we're going to slide it in. Now, to put these in, um, all you have to do is make sure smooth bits around the bottom, and the rest go up so it engages with that tab. And that's all there is to it. Just feed the other ones in, push them all the way to the end, and that tab will engage. And we have it. Three on one end and three loose ones on the other. I'm using an Arduino Nano board. It's got a USB mini connector on it. You can get them now with the USB-C, probably even micros. At any rate, you should be able to use any Arduino board as long as it's got a USB connector on it. All right, let's wire up the Arduino Uno. So for connecting this one, we're actually gonna use the transmission pin as well as the ground and the 5 volt. I assume that you already know how to use Arduino. Yeah, you can create a blank skip for it. So that's all you need. So we're going to take our signal line and stick that on the transmitter of the serial port, serial transmission. I'm going to attach our 5 volt and our ground. Just like that. Now let's plug it into our receiver. For this receiver, we're going to plug it into the serial communication port here. Signal wire goes to the right. And there we are. Let's plug it into the computer. Okay, we got a light right there. That's all there is to it. I'm using this FTDI USB serial adapter here. It's a FTDI 232. You can use any FTDI serial adapter that you want, I'm sure. I don't think you'll run into any issues. You, know, the, you can get them with USB C's now as well. Okay, it's time to wire up our TDR serial adapter. So, over here is our receiver wire, over here is our voltage pin, and over here is our ground. So let's get that wired up. I'm gonna use the orange here as our 
signal line. And of course, red is our voltage. And our brown, we're going to use as our ground. Okay, and then on this particular receiver, the IBUS goes there, signal wire right to the right. Now let's plug it into our computer. Red light is on here. Red light's there. We are good to go. The two things we need are VJoy, which is a virtual device driver, and VJoy serial feeder, which will take the data coming through the USB serial adapter and feed that into VJoy so that we can turn those signals into a virtual game device. So let's go ahead and download them. So when you're downloading the VJoy serial feeder, make sure you don't accidentally download the source code. What you want to download is the binary file, which is your Windows executable. And it can be found in a zip file if you just scroll down to the uh, releases tab. And as you can see here, there's a couple of, uh, versions, Windows 7 version and Windows 10 version. All right, now that we've downloaded these, I'm going to do a quick extraction of our VJoy serial feeder. While I'm at it, I'm going to create a desktop shortcut. Because we're going to need to open it up every time we're using this. And I'm going to run the VJoy setup. I'm going to keep the device manager up so that you can keep an eye on that. Notice here under human interface devices, we do not have a game device installed in there. And here we go. BJoy is a success. All right, the next step we need to take is a search for VJoy. And we're going to click on the Configure VJoy application. As you can see here, it's set up device number one. And you can set up multiple devices on this one. Anything that's uh, redded out could be another device that's already on your system. This sets us up with a bunch of access and a bunch of buttons. We're going to make changes to this because my transmitter only has four axes available and six buttons. Now I found that some programs in the flight simulator don't recognize all the axes here. I've found that all of the ones I'm flying work with these ones here, so those are the ones I'm going to set it with. I'm going to leave my button set to 6, and I'm going to hit Apply. As you can hear, the virtual device has been redetected with the new settings that we've made. Now it's time to run VJoy Serial Feeder. So right here, you can see that we've got VJoy 1 set as our virtual joystick. We're going to be using iBus, so we'll just leave that there. Let's just call this new profile Fly Sky. We're going to add our four axis and our six buttons. And we're going to set our channels.
And we're gonna save this. Now we're ready to plug in our serial adapter. We just refresh this and it's coming up COM5. So connect button. All right. So as you can see down here, it is connected, but there is a serial port read timeout. There's usually two reasons for that. One could be that your controller's not turned on, or two, you might be experiencing extreme latency. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my transmitter on. And as you can see, we are connected. And all my buttons and switches work. Now it doesn't end here. We can just quickly verify that everything's running by opening up our VJoy monitor. So as you can see, our VJoy device is currently set to device one and VJoy serial feeder is successfully receiving or sending the uh, data to our VJoy monitor. All right, what we want to do now is confirm that everything is working. And as you can see, Windows is detecting the game controller. Now all of your simulators can use it. Okay, let's cover troubleshooting here in case you guys run into any problems. Now I did say there's two reasons why this may not work for you. And the first one being that your transmitter hasn't connected to your receiver. Right now I've got the receiver plugged into the USB serial adapter, but the receiver itself isn't sending a signal to the USB serial adapter because it hasn't talked to the transmitter yet. So as you can see here right now, the USB serial adapters sending 10 updates a second, 100 milliseconds between updates to the VJoy serial feeder. So once we connect our transmitter to the receiver, it's gonna wake that receiver up and it's gonna start sending information. As you can see now, we're getting 135 updates a second, seven milliseconds between updates. Now don't let it trick you because even if I turn off my transmitter, it's still gonna be connect, the receiver's still gonna be connected to the USB serial adapter. So always double check that your transmitter is connected to your receiver. And in some instances, even with the transmitter turned on, for whatever reason, it's not communicating with the receiver. In that case, you have to unplug the USB serial adapter to kill power and restart that receiver. Always make sure that you start with your transmitter turned off and your serial, um, sorry, and your receiver turned off, start fresh, and you'll have less problems, less confusion as to what's going on. The second problem that you could have is with the communication latency. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change my port settings here. Right here, select lower settings to correct response problems. That's what we have when we've got latency issues. And I don't know if it's the particular driver that's defaulting to 16 milliseconds or if it's Windows doing that, but every time I've used this on Windows 8 and Windows 10, I've been having the same latency issues because it's set to 16 milliseconds. So just change that and let's do a quick connection here. See, now you can see things are going crazy here. We got, you know, four or 500 updates a second, two, three milliseconds between updates. 
And if you move your sticks, you can actually see that there is some communication happening. But it's very slow. Now all we need to do is go ahead and dial that back. And don't worry about your bits per second or your baud rate there. Um, setting that higher isn't going to change anything for you and you're not going to get any performance uh, increase. The only thing you can do is come here and change your latency timer down to 4 milliseconds. You can actually change it to, uh, I find, pretty much anything below 16. But if you want the best performance, I've ran through all the, the different settings, and it seems that four milliseconds um, will give you the best performance out of uh, any other options there. So we're going to go ahead and reconnect, and boom, we're now at 135 updates a second, seven milliseconds between updates, which is pretty much as fast as I've been able to get it. And we'll turn on our transmitter again. And there you have it. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you guys out getting your uh, transmitters connected to your simulators. Happy flying out there.